Hello, I am Leandro Melendez. Welcome to this brand new show. You are watching KSIX News. As you may have guessed, we will be giving here some news. But which news, you may ask? Well, at K6, we always have news. Quite a bit, actually. And in this show, we will be focusing on bringing you a great digest around what's new on each K6 open source release in our breaking news section. On it, we will present the main new functions, changes, updates, and deprecations in the current release. On top of that, we will be bringing our K6 developer correspondents to help and give some deeper details as they are the ones closer to the action, they are the ones creating the features, and they have deep knowledge on what is the deal with each element that we will be listing in the show. But that's not all. We wouldn't be a full-fledged new show without a weather segment, right? That's right. That is why we have our amigo Paul reporting from the St. Louis area with his weather segment, the K6 Cloud Weather Report. Hola, Paul. I know this may sound cliched, but what's up with the weather? Hola, Leandro. Hello, everyone. I'm Paul Baylog, your KSIX weatherman. Whether it's melting polar ice caps, El Nino, tornadoes, weather can be an unpredictable thing in the cloud. With our powerful Doppler radar, you'll know about changes to the climate that are affecting you in the cloud. Whether it's new features, improvements, fixes, you name it, we'll cover it. And whether you're looking to just simulate the jet stream, hurricane strength winds, or full-on tsunami, our K6 cloud weather team has you covered. We're gonna keep you informed to make sure that there's no rain on your parade. I can't wait to show you all these details and more, but for now, back to you, Leandro. Thank you, Paul. What an awesome and shiny segment. Wink, wink. So, there you have it. Those are the main elements of this show. But being a news show, well, we come with some more news. A few days after this show airs uh, streams, we will do an almighty K6 community call, inviting our community to join us. On it, Paul and I will be joined by some of the developer correspondents so that the community that joins us in that call will have the chance to literally call or video call, if you like, to talk about the release, ask some questions that you may have around uh, all these release news. The next community call will happen next Wednesday, March 23rd, 2022, at 10am US Central. For ease and to avoid any time zone confusions, we will be adding a calendar link in the notes of this show and as well we will share them on over our social networks so that you can download and have the right time in your own calendar together with the URL to join us on the call. Okay, now that we know what is the deal with the show, well, Let's get rolling! Today, we will be talking about the latest K6 OSS release number 0 0.37. Now, the first feature that we will talk about is experimental, so just beware. This new feature is a new basic event loop. Again, it is experimental, and because of this, it is only available to the K6 extension. This is adding support for set timeout, set interval, clear timeout, and clear interval. We expect that this update will help to ease some of those difficult use cases that have been reported to us. Again, for now, it is implemented as experimental extensions. Stay tuned, as we will be working on stabilizing them before we merge them into the core or the main code. About that, we will be giving you updates here on this show on how it is going. And speaking of extensions, if you're an extension developer, please go for it and uh, share your thoughts. Try this new extension. Uh, just uh, again, beware, it is experimental and it is likely that the current Go API will change. All right, in other news, K6 now has a new option to output K6 logs to a file through the dash dash log dash output CL or command line modifier. 
A separate uh, part of the release is that we are deprecating internal modules and uh, switching to a new module API. Two very important things. And to share more details about them, we have today the developer correspondent Ivan Paladino reporting directly from Modena, Italia. Ciao, Ivan. What can you tell us about these new details? Um, when starting, why don't you start with the output functionality? Hi, Leandro. Here, Ivan reporting from Italy. We added a new option for our K6 command line where you can set a new log output for streaming the logs to a file. You can specify the file directly in the command line option and the log will flow through the file and you can check after without losing. That is great, but if this is a new functionality, uh, do you mind telling us uh, how it was done before? Before, we had some alternatives that are currently still available. That was the standard output and the standard error and the possibility to push the logs to Grafana Loki instances. Wow, that's a great new functionality and very happy that we can implement it. But on the other news, there was another functionality. Can you tell us about some of uh, those API deprecations that um, were mentioned that happened? Yes, we deprecated an old API for sharing the information between the views and the JavaScript modules. The current API is more clean and allow to the user to get the status information about the view in a better and cleaner way. We introduced a warning for this release where we tell the users to migrate to the new API and we plan to drop in the next release totally the old API. Molto grazie Ivan. Uh, this is a great feature that in this release we have a warning for that uh, that you mentioned. And uh, Ivan, uh, thank you again and keep up with the great work. Thanks, Leandro. Back to you. See you soon. Stay performant. Bye. Arrivederci, Ivan. And uh, a little detail about what we just saw. We should thank as well, uh, give some thanks to Alexander, also known as Al Yakimenko in GitHub, for the contribution over this output function. We love all of our contributors. Seriously, thank you very much for all your help and please don't stop it. Moving on. Version 0.37 is introducing as well some stricter uh, thresholds parsing. This is because before 37, a JavaScript runtime was evaluating the thresholds. And this was not optimal, not so satisfying either. So in this release, thresholds are now parsed directly in Go, enabling K6 to return error messages right away if the thresholds do not strictly match the documented specification. Whereas before, it just silently ignored them. Hmm. Again, in this release, if there is a threshold with the wrong syntax on its expression, the run will be interrupted immediately, before even starting the load test run. You will know right away if you need to tune that good old code that you are working on. <laughs> now, on another update, we also changed our Docker repository. Before, you could find it at loadimpact slash k6. And since we are now part of Grafana Labs, you can find our Docker repository at grafana slash k6. And last but not least, we have many enhancements, improvements, and bugs that were smashed on this release. Let's do a quick mention of each one of them. All right, first, we did improvements on loading and parsing of the source map feature. Remember from the last version, we're still working on that. Second, our friend contributor, Karitham, helped to update the installation from source instructions. Thank you, Karitham. Three, we enabled TC39 tests. Take a look at them. Number four, the bug where HTTP.head was taking a body as a syncot argument in version 36 has totally been fixed. And five, there were also fixes on the options.scenarios.json marshalling and uh, there were display names in K6 REST API, and some improvements on argument validations for check, HTTP batch, and metrics constructors. Whew, wow, <laughs> so many details and updates, right? 
Well, to give you a little break, as a little ad as well, and some help, if you want to dig deeper on any of those updates that we just mentioned, please go to the link in the notes below of this video to download the calendar invite to join us on the community call. And uh, really now, speaking of ads, let's do a quick break to get some of those good old ads, right? Ladies and gentlemen, have you heard about the magic of the new K6 browser extension? K6 now has some browser animation support, which allows you to animate those good old browsers and gather all the web metrics that a simple protocol animation won't help you. To find out more, take a look at our new video where our DevRel Nicole shows some of its features. And speaking of browser automations, if you have all the experience with browser-based automations, you like to teach and help people to embrace them, and you just can't stop talking about them, the K6 team is looking for you. Reach out at the link below. Welcome back. All right, enough with the 0 0.37 release. Let's move on and check up with Paul. Paul, what's up with the cloud? Hey, Leandro. Weather patterns have been trending nicely in the cloud these days. We've recently introduced the ability to pre-select your default project based upon user settings. Now, previously, this was defined at the organizational level. Now, you can have members from multiple teams publishing the different projects by default. Now, of course, you can still target a specific project based upon ID within your scripts. Now, also, Test Builder has the support for K6 scenarios. This allows you to refine your weather pattern for your load tests and go from a tropical depression to a category five hurricane, all within a specified duration. Also, did you know that Test Builder doesn't require an active subscription to be able to use it. Folks who are looking to use stick with the free and open source version of K6 can utilize the cloud-based Test Builder as an IDE. That way then you can have a nice user interface for creating your load test scripts and then export those and pull them down into your local environment and run them as you would normally against the K6 open source version. Who says you can't have your cake and eat it too? And lastly, we introduced the K6 Cloud for Education program. This program allows for educators and community champions alike to teach aspiring load test meteorologists using a free subscription. We've already had some universities and workshops sign up, so please check out the K6IO website and apply uh, to get your subscription going. Well, that's all I have for the weather. It's so nice out right now, I'm going to the beach. Back to you, Leandro. That was an awesome update, Paul. Thank you very much for it. So everyone, beware and look out for the clouds. All right, we have reached the end of tonight's report. But before we call it a day, I want to remind you do not forget to join us this Wednesday, March 23rd, 2022 at 10 a.m. U.S. Central on the first and brand new K6 Community Call. Calendar link in the description below. Well, that's going to be it for all of us here at KSIX News. I am Leandro Melendez. You stay classy, K6. Bye.